Hello, I'm Wen Xing, a PhD student at the University of Hong Kong. In this video, I'm going to share my research on the character Shen in early China. Well, the inspiration occurred last winter. During that time, the pandemic began and affected almost every aspect of our life. I stayed at home and reread this book, A Brief History of Humankind. I was trapped by the question again. Do we become happier than we used to be? We have the internet, the most convenient access to information. We have division labor and assembly line which maximize production efficiency. We seem to own the ability of acquiring what we want in a relatively short time. However, the virus told us that things are not so easy because human is not the absolute center of the world. Then another question came to my mind. Are we wiser than our forebears? In ancient China, the terminology pronounced as sheng defines a person with the highest wisdom and virtue, or being experienced and knowledgeable, which might be similar to the English word sage. Here, I will focus on the abrasion and the usage of the character sheng. Based on the investigation of unearthed material from the late Shang to the Warring States period, which is known as oracle bone scraped, bronze vessel inscriptions, bamboo slips texts, and so forth, the original and developed meaning of the word over 1,500 years might be roughly outlined. Ancient classics like the documents and dictionaries like the Shouwen Jiezi might also provide some interpretations of the word in later periods. Let's begin with the late Shang when evidence of writings was found on ox scapula and turtle plastron over 3,000 years ago. They are the earliest Chinese characters and records of religious rituals and ceremonial acts. This is a piece of oracle bone carved two statements with the character Shang. The texts are symmetrically distributed. Each of them gives a position to the future. Hearing the wind, there might be a disaster. Hearing the wind, there might not be a disaster. Very briefly, the forecasting statements seem to be meaningless. However, as a part of demonstration on seasonal ceremony to wings, the record proves the existence of divination used in Shang rituals and indicates the process of the ceremony. The character Shang functions as a verb and links the prediction. Therefore, it is likely to be a technique that requires a distinctive skill or capability. However, not every piece of bum provides so many detailed information. Some scripts are vague. Some only contain one character and cannot be used for textual research. So far, four examples of the character Sheng have been found in excavated and published oracle bones. They have the same structure, components, and even strokes. Each of them consists of three basic radicals that represent an ear, a mouth, and a person. As a pictograph, the character Shen represents an emphasis on auditory perception by placing a symbol of an ear beside the pictogram of a mouth, which resembles the action of someone receiving a sound. Such expression technique can also be found in primitive art. Sanxingdui archaeological site is famous for its gold mask, while another artifact the bronze mask with protruding eyes is also impressive for its cylinder-shaped pupils and large ears. Along with this mask, there were also found a large number of eye-shaped objects that no one had ever seen before. The significance of eyesight was also highlighted in the Taotia pattern curved on bronze vessels, particularly prevalent in the Shang Dynasty. They were decorated on Gu, Lei, Jia and Ding and other bronze vessels. Compared with other parts on the face, eyes are depicted in an exaggerated way on Shan people's ritual utensils. The emphasis on eyesight is direct, engraving a noticeable design of a pair of eyes. Similarly, 
the character shown illustrates the act of hearing. As we mentioned before, each individual part symbolizes a symbol static meaning, and after they assembled as a whole, a new character was born. Actually, there are other shapes imply the meaning of hearing in Oracle Bone scripts, and they only include two components, ear and mouth. Perhaps it distinguishes the ordinary hearing from the action of hearing applied in some religious ceremony, or an extraordinary auditory sense owned by exceptional groups by placing a person here. And I will investigate the point for future research. Well, in the following Western Zhou Dynasty, the inscribed character Sheng was mainly used as a title for kings, their ancestors, and offspring. For example, the inscription on Bangui includes a demonstration of King Wen's dissident. As a great grandchild of King Wen and his consort, he rose to a superior position. I translate the Sheng as great, a laudatory title, but the connotation is more than that. Related to royal kingship of Zhou, the title Sheng may denote something spiritual. People in Zhou Dynasty treated their ancestors as deities living in heaven, but sometimes engaging in the human world. Here, the bronze vessel inscriptions show that forebears of kings and aristocrats, both male and female, were described as sheng. For example, Shi Ying made the bronze food container for his respectable great parents who had passed away. And Great King Chen, Great Ancestor Duke of Zhou, Royal Great Ancestors, and Great Consort. These inscriptions are from the Western Zhou Dynasty to the Orange State period. We can observe that Sheng functioned as a spiritual title for royal kingship. At the same time, the character Sheng was still used for classifying someone's quality in the period of Zhou Dynasty. While from the 8th century BC, the term gradually shifted to an objective or a noun that describes a state of being insightful. The inscriptions in Midwestern Zhou and the Spring and Autumn period have shown that the character Sheng was widely used along with the word intellectual bright, and so on. Here is a part of the inscription on a musical bell in the late spring and autumn period. Sage, intellectual, gentle, and kind, which describes the good virtues of leaders. Therefore, we can conclude that the character shown and other complementary words compound as objective phrases that summarize good qualities of ancestors of former kings. The usage of Sheng was more common from the beginning of the 5th century BC, seen from the ancient textual record. For one thing, Sheng was used as a laudatory prefix, but extended to entitled aristocrats, except from rulers of a kingdom. For another thing, it shifted to an expression of characteristic of virtue, such as kind and sensible inscribed on the thing. Besides, the terminology sage king also emerged and was used in inscriptions and ancient classics. This period is well known for hundreds of schools of thoughts which formed in the background of the decline of Zhou royal court and frequent state warfare. Scholars like Confucians and Taoists expected to find the order of the human world and principle of the cosmos. Embedded the concept of virtue, Sheng was one of the key points mentioned in ancient documents and philosophical works. In the Mencius, scholars talked about the definition and standard of Sheng, while in the Zhuangzi, there is another perspective to the existence of a sage man. Here is an excerpt of the six virtues in Gordian Chu slips. The seven characters means what is the six virtues? Sage, 
intellectual, and so on. Sheng was placed on the first position of six significant moral qualities, compared with intellectual, zhi. It would be appropriate to translate the character Sheng as sage here. Further text demonstrates the knowledge transformation and the character Sheng may represent the highest level of wisdom and morality. There are other unearthed texts that emphasize the distinctive feature of sage men, like the five aspects of conduct, wu xing. These chapters were found in both Gordian Discoveries and Ma Wangdui Han Tomb site. Although the manuscript in Ma Wangdui was written later than the one in Gordian, contents are almost the same. Both of them discuss the standard of being sage, and particularly lay stress on the capability of hearing and interpreting. Moreover, to act sagely is likely to be a genius. In the text from Ma Wangdui, being sage derives from heaven, while being intellectual starts from the human world. Apart from storage of knowledge and experience, being sage requires a comprehension of natural law and behaviors based on it. According to the text of Xunzi, Confucius classified people into five groups. The highest realm is the great sage, Da Sheng. As I said, a great sage is one who responds to changes appropriately without cease and correctly distinguishes among the inborn dispositions and natures of the myriad things. Rooted in the great way, Da Dao, the text defines Sheng as an extraordinary capability of understanding changeable nature phenomena and master human affairs. By the way, when I compared the translation with the original Chinese texts, an English idiom popped into my mind, played by ear. Perhaps people all over the world treat the ability of hearing and acting of the same importance. Last in the Han Dynasty, the ancient dictionary Shu Wen Jiezi defined the word Sheng as Tong. I translated it to sensible, insightful, and reasonable. Scholars such as Kong An Guo, Zheng Xuan, and Ban Gu also concluded the feature of sages as Tong. According to the commentaries or interpretations of classics, Sage was a description of someone who is knowledgeable in fields like astronomy, geography, humanity, and divinity, and is able to apply them. The only one character Tong as an alternative of Sheng is ambiguous for us now, but perhaps the original meaning of Tong, go with no barriers, may be easier to be comprehended in Han Dynasty when the expression of sage finalized its connotation from physical senses to mental ability. Even though the standard of being sage or wisdom was modified over thousands of years, it is worthwhile to explore what kind of ability was deemed as sage. The world we live now was constructed by our ancestors, and some values we believe and virtues we admire are also passed on by the ancients. So tracing back the interpretation of the sage in early China may enlighten us and help us to rethink what should be called wisdom now.